this year, we finally got a solar panel. It has been amazing. And now I'm going to tell you the story about why we waited to go solar, how we chose and installed our panel, and the difference it's made to onboard life. Solar power seems like the most obvious choice for a boat, especially when you're cruising around hot, sunny places. So why did we wait a season before installing one? Because Magic Carpet is a small boat, only 28 feet, she doesn't have a lot of deck space for a solar panel to go. Plus, when placed on the deck, the panel can often become shaded by the sails or the boom. Even a partially shaded panel vastly reduces output and can actually lead to overheating. The next best option would be on the Bimini, but our Bimini is pretty lightweight, made with fabric, and isn't designed to hold the weight of a heavy panel. Plus, the backstay goes right through it, limiting the space available. Sometimes people build custom frames for their solar panels that act sort of how a Bimini would. But of course, getting a frame built from aluminum or steel takes time and is expensive. Our strategy at first was that the batteries would charge whenever we turned on the engine to lift or lower the anchor. That worked fine to begin with because we had barely any electrical demand. But after the first season of sailing, when our YouTube channel started picking up and I started spending a lot more time on my laptop, we realized that charging the batteries with the engine alone wasn't going to cut it anymore. That's when we started looking into solar with more interest. We quickly realized that the best option for us was mounting a panel on top of the Bimini, but like I said, since it's pretty lightweight, we needed a lightweight and flexible panel rather than a heavy, rigid one. However, flexible panels are known to have a few issues. For starters, they're usually less efficient than rigid ones. Also, the flexibility can mean that poorly designed flexible panels easily develop micro cracks, which in turn leads to overheating that could, and sometimes does, burn right through your Bimini. In short, if you can get a solid panel, I would, but for us, we needed a lightweight and flexible one. So with that criteria, we started looking for a panel that was well-built and safe, light and flexible, has good output for a flexible panel, and would fit well on our Bimini. We did a bunch of research, and I'll put the link to some of the articles we found helpful down in the description. We eventually settled on a European-based, very reputable company that makes high-quality, flexible solar panels using sun power cells. We are not an affiliate or anything, but I will put a link to the panels we got in the video description. They're from a company called Solbian. Now, obviously choosing a safer, more efficient, higher quality panel costs more than buying a cheap Chinese knockoff, and those are trade-offs you have to decide for yourself. The way we think of it, Magic Carpet is a small boat, and when everything is smaller, we can afford to pay a bit more for what there is. Also, after we had decided to get a Solbian panel, I tried something new and I actually emailed them asking if they'd be interested in giving us a discount since we were going to show their panels in our videos anyway. And to my great surprise, they replied and we ended up getting a really good deal on a 130 watt panel and a Victron charge controller. So huge thanks to the folks at Solbian for helping us out when they really didn't have to. There's many ways you can mount a flexible solar panel depending on where you want it, and we're just going to show you the way that we did it. We ordered a panel with eyelets on the edges so we could tie it onto our Bimini. Another common way to do it is with Velcro, and I will include a link about that in the description. We installed the panel when we were in the boatyard and luckily had the use of a friend's sewing machine. Thank you again, Maxime. However, we didn't have to do too much sewing, so it would be possible to do it by hand as well. It would obviously just take a lot longer. Here's a list of everything that we needed. One, solar panel, obviously. Two, a solar charge controller. This is for regulating the charge going to your batteries so that you're not going to damage them. We chose an MPPT controller from Victron. There are different kinds of charge controllers, but MPPT, uh, according to our research, are generally the most efficient by providing more power to the battery. If you purchase your solar panel from a reputable company, you can often ask them which charge controller would be best for you, depending on if you have a 12 volt or a 24 volt system, how many amps you expect to get from your panels and how many panels you are purchasing. Three, we needed our installation tools and for us this meant a sewing machine, a hot knife, some rope, and some extra fabric. 
4. Wiring of a sufficient gauge to run from your solar panel to your MPPT controller to your batteries. And 5. You will need some kind of deck fitting for the wires to pass through the deck down to your battery compartment or where your MPPT is, assuming you're going to put them through the deck. You might have a different solution here. Here's how we installed our panel. 1. Mark where the panel should sit on the bimini. 2. Remove the bimini canvas. 3. Add reinforcements where the attachments will be. We used leather, but you can also just add more fabric. 4. Cut and reinforce holes for the wires to go through. 5. Add a pocket to cover the exposed wires. This just protects them from sun damage. 6. Prepare a diamond knot securing line for each eyelet. This can be undone for easy storage because occasionally when it's very heavy weather you might want to put your solar panels down below to keep them safe. Seven, and this is optional, but you can add sail battens or another rigid support as extra support for the panels. This just offers more rigidity, more airflow, less risk to exceed bending capabilities and cause breakage. Eight, we remounted the bimini canvas. Nine, we mounted the solar panel using the diamond knots that we had prepared. feed the wire through the pocket that we made. And 11, now this is of course also optional, but we actually decided to use old halyard sleeves to hide and protect the wiring. Uh, this again protects the wires from sun damage, but it also makes it just a lot nicer to look at when you've got wires running down your bimini. 12, determine where the wires want to pass through your deck and then make a hole with a drill. Add your MC4 deck fittings. We got these from Solbian, but you can get any high quality deck fitting. Basically, there is um, four components to each side of the MC4 connectors. And you start off with the cap, which is to tighten and seal it completely. So I slide this one in first of all. Next one is the actual rubber seal, which will get pressed by the lid when I screw it on. And make sure uh -huh, it goes on this way. So I take it off and I put it on here, like that. So you see it fits loosely now, but as it gets compressed, when you screw the two things together, it will actually create a very tight seal. So those two things out of sight, out of mind, but they're in there. Don't forget about that. And uh, now the actual piece, the conductor maybe, which will connect to the other part, which is in this side. We squeeze this one on. So I always take this much off the rubber, but you can also read all about it in the MC4 connector manual that comes with it wire is in now i push this into the connector and you will hear a clicking noise when you pushed it far enough because then it has like a like barbs on a fishing hook so you can you can't actually pull this off anymore once it's in so make sure you got both pieces in here and this is the very last one which goes onto it and you press until it clicks. Click. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> 13. Mount your solar charge controller or your MPPT controller somewhere dry where you can keep an eye on it. Shortest wiring from the panel to the MPPT to the batteries is always best. 
I have both ends here which come from the solar panel and we labeled both wires so in our case pan solar panel will be 66. It's also obvious once it's connected but we always go worst case what if all four would wiggle loose at the same time uh, so we still know which is which and instead zero those are the sides from the battery. So now I'm gonna cut these to length as well and then strip the cable and make them ready to be inserted into our controller. 14, run wires to the MVPT controller and your battery and then you're done. So now I wanna see how much um, amperage is actually coming in and I wanna check that through our Victron battery monitor. So I switch off the, the main switches of the complete boat so we would have no draw at all and we see what is still happening to the batteries. I turn this off. Nice. And do you see it? It's indicating 6.4 amps. What time do we have? Four in the afternoon, which is not noon and not, yeah, what could be even better. Six and a half amps, That's this is amazing. absolutely amazing. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's connect. Plug in the laptop then and uh, put on the fridge <laughs> and that's it. We decided to choose a panel that would fit well in the space we already have and provide some extra power rather than trying to fit enough solar panels on board to cover all our electrical needs. However, we find that with the 130 watt panel we're able to keep the batteries topped up enough during the day and every time we turn the engine on to bring up anchor or make a short passage then we're able to charge the batteries completely again. If you have more surface area then more watts are definitely better but we're starting off slowly with what we have. At midday, we usually get about seven amps from the panel. Because it's mounted on a flat surface and doesn't track the sun, we definitely lose a lot of power, but just the way our boat is set up, there wasn't another attractive option for installation. However, we have been surprised that even late in the afternoon, we still consistently get about four amps of power, which is pretty good. My laptop takes about five amps of power and the solar panel can provide that plus a bit extra from around about nine to three or four in the afternoon. Salt spray and dirt frequently stick to the panel, so we frequently dust it off using a clean cloth to prevent scratching its surface. That always makes a very big difference to its output. Overall, the panel has made a really big difference to our lives on board. It's very amazing that there's just this thing on top of the bimini that silently puts charge into our batteries, but I do think uh, it's important to make a very conscious decision when you choose your solar panel, that you choose what's right for your boat and what's right for you, and that you choose an installation method that makes sense. There's a lot of different options out there. There's also a lot of different qualities of solar panels, and you just have to decide which one is going to work best for you. I can also say that I'm very happy with the installation method. We've had it on for two months now. We've had uh, 40 knots winds. It has been amazing. So small and so powerful. We have encountered many other boaters as one does when cruising. And I've always compared our solar panel to uh, the other boaters solar panels. And uh, it is incredible in the output for the size. Uh, we have seen so many solar panels and many of them actually um, quite a bit bigger, uh, giving a 100 watt output. So this one is 130 in its compact size. Uh, that's one of the big, uh, big, big um, features.